Greetings in the name of Jesus Christ. Uh, we want to thank God for this opportunity to be able to join together in listening to God's word uh, and also just connecting with each other through online ministry. We want to thank God for this privilege and honor. Uh, uh, last time I was able to share how to become a person of God's presence. Today I would like to share on how to live in the blessings of God's presence. What are the blessings of God's presence that when we learn to stay in his presence that will be reflected in our lives? So as we look at these scriptures, I want you just to look for these signs in your lives. If these signs are there, then you know that God has made you to be a person of God's presence. The first sign or the first blessings of God's presence is God gives you his rest. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 14, Today you are driving me from the land, and I'll be hidden from your presence. I'll be a restless wanderer on the earth, and whoever finds me will kill me. Notice Cain knew that if he left God's presence, he'll always be restless during his journey on earth. Unfortunately, we know that Cain left, and that word was fulfilled in his life. Uh, one would wish that when the Lord was communicating to Cain, about the uh, discipline the Lord was bringing to him. If he had asked for mercy and forgiveness, there was no need for him to be able to leave God's presence. We see in Exodus chapter 33, verse 14, where the Lord promised Moses that the presence of God will go with him. It says, the Lord replied, my presence will go with you and I'll give you rest. So God connects the presence of God in our lives to his rest. We know that in the book of Hebrews chapter 3 and chapter 4, the Bible says that it has always been God's plan and desire for all God's people to enter his rest. So one of the things that God releases in our lives to be able to enter his rest, which is actually his own very person, is to release his presence. Whenever the presence of God in our lives will experience his rest, calmness, and peace at all times. Look, take a look at your own life where you stand with the Lord in this. If at this moment you are experiencing restlessness, your heart is not at peace, it is important to go back to the Lord and engage him and ask him how you can enter in his rest. If it's personal sin that you need to repent, you need to go back to the Lord and correct it. If it's a relationship that is broken, you need to go back and reconcile. If you have not spent time in his presence, you need to take uh, uh, time just to learn to engage the Lord so that his presence will rest upon you continually. The second blessing of God's presence is joy. The Bible says in two scriptures, Psalm 16 verse 11, You make known to me the path of life. You will fill me with joy in your presence, with eternal pressures at your right hand. Psalms 21 verse 6 it says, Surely you have granted him unending blessings and made him glad with the joy of your presence. So we see David says that one of the blessings that God releases in our lives is joy. Joy does not mean that our circumstances are good. It means that this joy flows from within us like a river, irrespective of what the circumstances we are going through. God is able to give us joy. And the Lord says clearly in the word in the book of Nehemiah chapter 8 verse 10 that when we have the joy of the Lord in our lives, then we are strong. Our strength in God comes with the joy that we receive in his presence. So as you pursue the Lord in his presence, as you seek to live in God's presence, you will become a strong believer because the joy of the Lord will become your strength. The third blessing of God's presence in our lives is success in God's ministry and work. We see this from the example of Joseph in Genesis 39 verse 23. The Bible says the warden paid no attention to anything under Joseph's care because the Lord was with Joseph and gave him success in whatever he did. We see that when God's presence with us, he will be able to do what? To make sure that he grants us success in the assignment he has given us whether it is ministry, marketplace ministry, in our families, in our daily undertakings. The presence of God is a guarantee that whatever he has entrusted to us will succeed. So if you look at your life and there are struggles, maybe one of the key signs that 
uh, you're having these struggles is maybe you have not experienced the presence of God. There is no awareness in your life that the Lord is with you. The Lord is very committed to make sure that we always walk in his manifest presence. We see this blessing in success in ministry and work also from the life of Jesus. The Bible says in Acts chapter 10 verse 38, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power and how he went around doing good and healing all who were under the power of the devil because God was with him. So Jesus was able to succeed his ministry of doing good and healing people and breaking the power of the evil because there was always the presence of God with him. It is the presence of God through the Holy Spirit that assured him of the power of the Holy Spirit to minister and break the chains of darkness. How are you functioning? Is your ministry uh, uh, full of the presence of God? Is there the power of God confirming everything that you're doing? If it's not, then it means you need to go back and engage the presence of God in your life. Another blessing of the presence of God, which is the fourth one, is God's protection. In Psalms 23 verse 4, David says, Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Another scripture is Isaiah 43 verse 2. God promises when you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. So God guarantees us that whenever we go through difficult times, whenever we go through trouble, whenever we go through affliction, what will keep us through the process is his presence. There are times when we pray, God will deliver us from whatever is afflicting us. But there are times when we pray, God's answer is to help us to go through the shadow of the valley of death or through go through difficult circumstances. Going through waters or passing through waters represents difficult times that the Lord allows us to go through so that we mature in our work with him. The Lord wants us to make sure that whatever we go through, the presence of God is always with us. Whenever things are difficult around you, connect with the Lord in your heart. Go back to the Lord and connect with Him. Bring your heart to be at a place of peace. Bring your heart to be a place of joy so that whatever is happening around you does not affect your relationship with God and your relationship with other people. If your relationship with God and other people is affected, that is a sign that the presence of God is not helping in your life. The fifth blessing of the, uh, the presence of God in our lives, through it God is able to display the power of God in your life. The Bible says in Exodus 34 verse 10, I will be with you and display my awesome power in your life. Now, the power of God here is not just, it goes beyond the presence of God. It means the supernatural ability of God that is released on our behalf to deliver us, to help us, so that God's purposes will be fulfilled. We know after this encounter with Moses on Mount Sinai, when Moses had gone back again to pray and fast, the Lord assured him that as they pursued the journey to reach the promised land, the Lord will release his power to help them, to protect them, to provide for them, to encourage them, so that they be able to reach the promised land that he had assured them to settle in. We too have a place of inheritance that the Lord wants us to settle in. The only thing that will help us to reach that place is when God's power is, is displayed on our behalf because of the presence of God. So one of the great benefits of the presence of God in your life is to see a practical, tangible, and visible demonstration of the power of God for provision, for protection, for deliverance, and for guidance in your life at all times. Another reason, another blessing of the presence of God in our lives is uh, found in Numbers chapter 17, 1 to 8, where the presence of God releases revival resurrection and fruitfulness in this passage the lord said to moses speak to the israelites and get 12 stars from them one from the leader of each of the ancestral tr tribes write the name of each man on his staff on the staff of levi write aaron's name for there must be one star for the head of each tribe 
Place them in the tent of meeting in front of the Ark of the Covenant, where I meet with you. The staff belonging to the man I choose will sprout, and I will rid myself of this constant grumbling against you by the Israelites. So Moses spoke to the Israelites, and their leaders gave him twelve staffs, one for the leader of each of their ancestral tri tribes. And Aaron's staff was among them. Moses placed the stars before the Lord in the tent of the covenant law. The next day, Moses entered the tent and saw that Aaron's staff, which represented the tribe of Levi, had not only sprouted, but had budded, blossomed, and produced almonds. So we know the staffs the tribes of Israel were carrying were physically dead. These were not alive. But when they were put in the presence of God, the one that God approved was able in one night to move from a dead uh, almond staff to a fruitful staff that was bearing fruit. In one night it sprouted, budded, blossomed and produced almonds. So let's assume it was taking seven years for an almond tree to, to be able to become fruitful. In one night through the presence of God, it was able to produce fruit. This was a clear sign to the Jewish people that the Lord had appointed Moses and appointed the tribe of Levi for the priestly ministry that the Lord had given them. It also shows us that sometimes when uh, uh, in life your leadership, your authority is challenged, the Lord will give a public display to show that whatever uh, he has entrusted to you will produce fruit so that it gives you confidence to be able to go through the challenges even when you're dealing with other people. So the presence of God will bring what? It brought revival. Actually, it brought resurrection. A dead almond staff became alive. It burdened. That means revival. And it ends up able to produce fruit. So the presence of God in our lives we don't have to struggle to be fruitful Christians so long as we are staying in the presence of the Lord. According to the gifts and the callings the Lord has given you, the Lord will produce his fruit if you are willing to abide in the presence of the Lord at all times. So I want to challenge you. Don't be a striving Christian. Don't be a Christian that is also wrestling with God and wrestling people to be fruitful. You do not have to prove anything to any human being. Just focus in staying in the presence of God, living in the presence of God, you will sprout, you will resurrect, you'll be fruitful, and the Lord will be able to release blessing in your life and in ministry and whatever the work the Lord has given you, even in the marketplace. You do not have to fight people. So long as you're obeying the strategies that the Lord has given you, you will always be a revived Christian, full of life and also fruitful at all times. The seventh blessing of God's presence in our lives is that you are able to eat God's fresh, mature word of his presence. The Bible says in Exodus 25 verse 30, put the bread of the presence of this table to be before me at all times. One of the priestly responsibilities when the tabernacle and the temple existed, every week on the Sabbath day, the priest had to bring fresh bread, baked bread into the holy place before the Lord. On the one side was the table of the presence that had the bread. On one side was the candlestick, the seven-branched uh, candlestick. One represented the presence of God through bread. One represented the presence of God through the Holy Spirit. And the two were supposed to be in the same room. And the priests were the only people who were allowed to eat from the bread. No one else was allowed to eat from it. Now the bread represented strong meat fresh from the presence of God, that every one of us as priests, we need to daily be able to eat the fresh presence of God's word. We should not be having stale or rotten bread of God in our spiritual lives. Every day we have to trust God for the fullness of the presence of bread. Now we know in the Bible, the Bible teaches there are three stages of a believer. New believers are to take God's word as milk. Growing believers are to eat the bread of God's presence as what? As their daily nourishment. When you enter the Holy of Holies, the Bible expected uh, us to partake of manna, which was for the mature believers. Or in the New Testament, it says, says the strong meat of God's word. God who always deals with us according to where we are in our spiritual lives. 
if we see you are stuck with the basic things of Christianity, it means that you have chosen to stay in God's milk. You have refused to mature as a believer to become a priest that can eat the bread of God's presence. Now, this was fresh bread. There is always a fresh word from God's presence every day. And as you mature, the Lord is able now to tell you to move on where you can eat the strong meat of God's word that will help you to be a mature Christian, to be strong and be, um, be able to stand in God's presence even in tough times. You need to make sure that you are always pursuing to learn more from the Lord. You need to pursue to move on from uh, uh, basic teachings of Christianity basic, to mature teachings of God's word so that you can mature and you can become a pillar in God's house. Whatever you eat defines how God deals with you and even the responsibilities the Lord is able to trust you with. It depends on your spiritual diet, whether it's spiritual milk of God's word, whether it's bread or the strong meat of God's word. One of the things you will notice when you live in the presence of God's word, you find that the, whenever the word of God is spoken, you're able to understand it instantly, even without, without taking notes, because it comes as a revelation that comes to your spirit man, that fills your mind, gives you light and understanding to be able to walk in the purposes of God for that season. And it always results in transformation. The Bible says in Hebrew, uh, Romans chapter 12 that one of the ways God transforms, uh, transforms us is to make sure that our minds are renewed by God's word continually so that until the time will come, we will have the mind of Christ. So in conclusion, we need to remember that one of the names, the uh, seven, seven covenant names of God is Jehovah Shammah, where God says is the Lord of uh, uh, who was always there with us. We see the, this one given in Ezekiel chapter 48, verse 35, where it says, and the name of that city from that time will be the Lord is there. That's how we got the name Jehovah Shammah. God is a God who wants us to be always a God who has his manifest presence displayed in our lives on a daily basis. We should never go through any day or any time in our lives we are not when you are not aware of God's manifest presence. And God's manifest presence is what? Tangible, uh, something you can experience every day, just like we have known God as Jehovah Jireh or Jehovah Rapha, the Lord who heals us, or the Lord who fights our battles. The Lord wants us to know him through Jesus Christ as Jehovah Shammah, the Lord who's always there manifesting daily to dwell in us, every day so that he walks with us all the days of his life. So I trust that you'll continue to pursue God, like Psalms 42 verse 1 says, that you'll always seek the presence of God in your life. May you experience the blessings of God's presence as you do it. God bless you. Uh, let us pray together. Father, in the name of Jesus, we want to thank you that you have not only called us to become a people of God's presence, but you assure us in your word, when we do, you shall release the blessings of God's presence in our lives. We pray that these blessings of God's presence will overwhelm us, overflow through our lives, and even be able to touch people and touch situations around us all the days of our lives. So we pray, Father, for an increase of the presence of God in our lives. We pray for an increase of God. We pray that we shall be carriers of your presence. We want to thank you and we want to praise you. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. God bless you. See you next time.